Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome to devlog number 28. In this one, I got to work on building a launcher for the game that can automatically download and install updates. Alright, so I got back from my trip yesterday a little earlier than originally planned. With everything going on in the world and flights getting cancelled, we ended up taking one of the last ones back. I'm home now, alive and well, and in self-isolation for the next two weeks. I want to start working on a launcher for the game in this devlog, but as I probably won't really get started until tomorrow, I'll stick with my original plan to not upload a video this weekend. I didn't make any progress between the end of the last devlog and leaving, as I spent that time putting together two videos to upload while I was away, so this will give me a week and a half to make some decent progress. I've often heard it said that consistency is king when it comes to growing on YouTube, but I'm also curious to see how my channel will be affected if I miss a week of uploading. Speaking of growing on YouTube, I actually hit the 4000 public watch hours threshold today, which means I'm now eligible for monetization. However, you probably won't see any ads on my videos for at least another month, as the application process takes some time. Apparently it typically takes about one month to get reviewed, but with what's going on, which I'll avoid explicitly mentioning in the hopes that this video remains monetizable, everything is likely going to take quite a bit longer. Anyways, I'd like to build this launcher in a way that allows me to write the code once and run it on multiple platforms, the main priorities being Windows and Mac OS. I've really only used C Sharp in conjunction with Unity or in console apps, so this will definitely be a learning experience, even if I don't end up using the launcher when I release the game. For today, I'm probably just going to do some research on how to go about doing that, as I also want to get the YouTube monetization process started. So last night, I spent quite a while wrestling with AdSense, and ended up going to bed much later than I had intended. I knew I needed an AdSense account to hook up to YouTube in order for the review process to even begin, but I didn't apply for one until yesterday. I would have done it earlier, but I was a little unsure about whether or not I should finally get my own account. Up until now, I've been using my dad's AdSense account to show ads on my blog and my three iOS games, as I wasn't 18 at the time of setting those up and therefore couldn't have an account in my name. Since then I have in fact turned 18, but I hadn't bothered to get my own account because of the hassle of switching all the ads over. AdSense prohibits transferring accounts between owners, presumably for tax related reasons, but that would be so much simpler. For those of you that don't know, AdSense only allows one account per person. Even if you have multiple Google accounts, you can only have one AdSense account. I figured I'd be fine since the other account belongs to my dad, but I was wrong. A few hours after I applied for my own account, I was notified that I already have one, and it said it was linked to my dad's email address. Since our emails aren't related in any way, I can only assume that the system noticed I had put in the same address as my dad's AdSense account is linked to, and so it thinks that I already have an account. This seems extremely restrictive to me. Does that mean that if people share an address, they can only have one account between them? I ended up spending a solid few hours scouring help forms that weren't particularly helpful, and eventually I managed to find a contact form which I filled out. Anyways, I'm going to shut up about my frustrations with AdSense now, and considering the circumstances, I'm not really expecting a response from Google anytime soon, so the rest of this devlog will probably actually be about development. However, I'd love to know if this sort of stuff interests you guys, or if you don't really care, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. I've been thinking about making a video covering the whole monetization process, and if you've got any suggestions about anything specific you'd like me to include in that, I'd love to hear those as well. It's now early evening, and I still haven't really gotten started on the launcher. I went down a few rabbit holes in my research yesterday, but I'm still not really sure how to go about this. I read some stuff about the best option being to build out the business logic and then build the UI separately for each platform, but I have precisely zero idea in terms of how I'd go about doing that and what the process might look like. Ideally I'd like to use C Sharp, at least for the main logic part, but if anyone has any suggestions or tips, please let me know in the comments or on Discord. Since I've got a pretty good idea of how the launcher's actual logic will work, at least in theory, I think I'm just going to build one for Windows and worry about cross-platform support later. It's also quite possible that I'll implement some things in ways that are less than optimal, so rewriting the whole thing later will be beneficial anyways. Progress has been extremely slow with the launcher. I'll admit that especially yesterday, I had a really tough time getting started, which might at least in part be a leftover effect from being on vacation. I also haven't gotten my sleep schedule back in order, so that's not helping either. I've been struggling with trying to figure out how to properly save data persistently in the project, as that's something I'll need to be able to do. It appears that there's quite a few ways of doing it, but all of them don't seem to work. I keep running into issues with things not being accessible or files not existing the way the Microsoft Docs and Stack Overflow say they should, which has been pretty frustrating. 
On a much more exciting note, last night we hit 2,500 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. That's halfway to my year-end goal, and we're only 3 months into 2020. If things continue to grow like this, we'll actually hit the 5,000 mark well before June, which is much sooner than I ever would have expected. Additionally, in my recent video where I talked about how much money I've made from game dev, I mentioned that leaving comments and watching all the way through are two of the best ways you guys can support me. The amount of comments that were left just for the sake of giving me a boost was honestly pretty overwhelming. It goes to show that maybe I should mention that kind of thing more often, but I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's watched, liked, and commented on my videos, as well as subscribed to the channel. It's been a crazy last few months, and I obviously wouldn't be here without all your support. Late last night, after spending way too much time completely perplexed by the fact that my project didn't seem to have a settings file like the Microsoft Docs said it should, I discovered that if I start a project using .NET Framework, that file does seem to exist. My current project uses .NET Core, but apparently the file just isn't included by default there and I can add it manually. I'm going to try this out and hopefully I'll be able to use it to properly save some settings. It's just after 5 on Monday evening, and I think it's about time for a proper progress update. I did some work over the weekend, and the launcher can now download and update files. For now the game files are stored in my Google Drive, and I had intended to set things up in a way that the launcher would only re-download those files that have changed, but since the URL of files stored in Drive isn't based on the folder structure which contains that file, it makes it a lot more complicated to programmatically download things. I ended up abandoning that idea, and since my entire game is only about 20 megabytes, I decided to just zip it up and re-download the entire thing when the version changes. I'll probably come back to this in the future if the game's size increases dramatically, because it's definitely not as efficient as it could be. Although I spent quite a lot of time reading about hashing and actually implementing the necessary logic to check which files have changed by comparing hashes, it wasn't a complete waste. Even though I'm still by no means an expert, I have a much better understanding of hashing, which is one of those things that I had never really looked into before. Unfortunately a program downloading some files doesn't make for super interesting footage, but you can see here that if the version file doesn't exist, it will get downloaded along with a zip file containing the actual game files. Once the download finishes, the zip file's contents are extracted, and then the zip file gets deleted. If the version file does exist, the launcher will compare the local version to the online one. If the local version isn't the latest one, then the game files are downloaded. If the versions match, nothing will be installed. That means that the core functionality for the launcher is pretty much complete. All that's really left is to make things configurable by users since I've hardcoded stuff like the installation directory. Maybe I'll also give the launcher the ability to update itself, and obviously I need to build out the UI a bit, but I'll probably get started with that stuff tomorrow. Additionally, I finished setting up my AdSense account today, but YouTube still has to review my channel before I get accepted into the YouTube Partner Program and can monetize my videos. All I can do at this stage is wait, and unfortunately I suspect that it's going to take quite a bit longer than the typical one month. It's now 4.30pm on Friday, and it's been another couple days since I last showed you guys anything. It's taken quite a while, but I've managed to put together what I'd consider a relatively decent looking UI. Unfortunately, building this out took much longer than I expected. I'm using the Material Design and XAML Toolkit to help make things look nice. I'll leave a link to that below if you'd like to check it out. Initially I ran into some issues where certain UI elements would display differently than they should have based on the properties I had set. That really sapped my motivation, and I'm still not entirely sure why it was happening, so I'm just going to assume it's because I'm relatively new to XAML and don't actually know what I'm doing. Once I figured that stuff out, I dove into data binding so I could make my UI change dynamically based on my code, which also took a lot of time as this was a brand new concept for me. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The UI isn't terrible, and the launcher can automatically update the game files when necessary. However, I didn't get around to making the launcher update itself, and the news tab still doesn't display anything, so I'll probably work on that next week. If you enjoyed the video, remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and make sure to let me know what you think of the launcher down below. I read and respond to all the comments, so you can be sure that your feedback will be heard. Finally, if you'd like to join me on this journey as I develop a multiplayer game, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.